Um, okay, I'd just like to mention um, ways of thinking about tracers, and there's a wonderful paper written by Harmon Craig some many, many years ago on thinking about tracers, and I just like this because it says, well, let's just consider, uh, he was talking about ocean mixing, but we can do this in any system. And let's just consider uh, tracers that are stable, okay, and conservative. So this means um, not radioactive and no chemical reactions, okay? So there's a bunch of here that are listed. So of course I can you know, say, tell me a tracer that'll do that. Okay, but what are these tracers that do that? Okay, deuterium, it's not radioactive. And in the ocean, it's non-reactive. Deuterium in the water is not reacting in a way that can affect its isotope value. Helium-3 and helium-4, they're stable isotopes. They're not doing chemical reactions. So they're going to be this passive tracer that shouldn't change except by motion and diffusion, mixing, but no chemical reactions, no radioactivity. Stable, but has reactions. Okay, carbon-13, that's a great example. Okay, it's involved in photosynthesis. Okay, that's a chemical reaction, but it's a stable isotope. Okay, so it's constant, it's, 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 it's a stable isotope, but chemical reactive, phosphorus, oxygen. So these make great tracers in the oceans, okay? Um, <clears throat> radioactive and conservative. Okay, so that means it's radioactive, it's a clock, but no chemical reactions. Here's three, this should be RA, radon. Okay, so these are gases uh, or tritium. Okay, so again, tritium in water is not reacting but its concentration can be changed uh, by radioactivity. So this is a good tracer in the right situation, all of these. Then radioactive and chemical reactions, carbon-14, silica-32, and these other things. And then here's a great example, and it's actually something that Diane Pataki has done a lot of, is combining some of these. Carbon is the same element, okay? So its chemistry is the same, but here we could, here we got this component, stable, non-conservative. This other isotope is radioactive. So the same chemical reactions are going on, but in one case, it's got a stable tracer, in one case, a radioactive tracer, okay? So we can combine all of these things to our nefarious plans to understand how ecology and geology works. All right, here's examples <coughs> of different ways to use this. Um, this is taken from Broker and Peng, and unfortunately it, it's hard to get an update on this particular one. The other ones uh, are the same as they were, so Broker and Peng's 82 reference is an absolutely fantastic book, and this actually is, in, for, for me, probably the most influential uh, book in my way of thinking about um, geochemistry. I would urge you, if you can figure out how to find this thing, um, which was published privately, but still exists. And a couple thousand copies were printed. But every, every time I see one, I buy one. <coughs> um, and actually, you don't need to buy it at all if you don't, unless, unless you want, if you like the electronic versions, and it's free. So you can, buy, you can buy this for free. In fact, you can buy all of Wally's books for free. I think all of them, right, Diane? No, Diane's gone. Um, um, so, um, uh, Wally Broker is, uh, believes in making things available to the public, so he publishes books and says, fine, um, here they are, um, here's, take, take a PDF. Um, okay, this is just a tracer of helium-3, okay, no chemical reaction. So the changes that we're seeing can only be physical processes. Okay, no chemical processes can do this, only physical processes, okay. Here's something, there's no, this, none of this can be radioactivity, okay? So all of this has to be, you have to explain these in other ways, this carbon-13 has to be explained by this and mixing and diffusion, okay? Which I'm going to get to in a second. Here's another one. This is one of the coolest things that we've seen. Now, in 19, 
62 and 63, we did the best labeling experiment that's ever been done. We changed the concentration of tritium in the atmosphere, radioactive tritium, by a factor of 1,000. The entire atmosphere. Okay, and carbon-14 by a factor of two. Could you get permission to do this? No. You can only do this because you have an arms race between countries and are blowing things up in the atmosphere and you don't care. So the important lesson there is as a biogeochemist, think about these horrible pollution experiments, I mean events, as experiments. Somebody did this nasty thing, take advantage of it and you can learn about how the system works and how a system comes back to equilibrium, okay? So this was, we changed the concentration in the oceans, and this is the downward mixing of tritium into the ocean. So 1968, radioactive tritium has a concentration that looks like this. So this is a mixed layer. So the ocean is a wind mixed layer to about 400 meters, and then it went down like this. Over the next 10 years, you could actually see the downward mixing through the thermocline in uh, this area of Bermuda, okay? So you can see that this is actually mixing. So just every time a gigantic hurricane comes through, it'll actually mix water deeper. So now we're getting de this tracer from the surface being mixed down to more than a kilometer into the ocean. So really cool stuff. So, <clears throat> Now we have chemical reactions, radioactive decay. We have um, advection, sort of physically taking stuff and moving it. And we have diffusion, okay? So diffusion is a process. And I'd like to submit that in the next two weeks, you're gonna see a whole bunch of things that have a time dimension, and we can describe them all as a par C, the change in concentration with time, as a diffusion component, as an advection component, as a first order decay component. So this could be radioactivity or it could be a stable isotope that's following a first order rate constant law and other chemical reactions. Okay? So any change in isotopes in time can be described by all of these. And I'm gonna show you some of the things you will see in the next week, but you're not gonna realize that it's the same equation. You're gonna see pieces of this. Um, so there's again a wonderful book many years ago written by Bob Berner that kind of presents this out and says that basically in ecology and geology, we can describe any time dimension of a tracer in that form. Okay, so here's something I'm gonna talk about. What is the turnover rate of water in wood rats, okay? And in this case, this is where we got into trouble changing the drinking water from Miami to Salt Lake or back, okay? <clears throat> and this is the change in isotope ratio over time, just as this part of the equation, okay? So that's something I'll be discussing. And it just means that these are not operative in this reaction. But it's part of the whole equation. Um, here's an example that uh, will be talked about a little bit in week two about diffusion of gases in soils. This has a diffusion component and a chemical reaction component, but no advection and no radioactive decay. This is just the isotope values of soil CO2. Uh, and this is just an example where it's preserved in the geological record. This is a isotope profile that's preserved by a former student of mine, Jay Quaid, Jay Quaid many years ago. <clears throat> Here's a really cool study by Jess Adkins in looking at the isotope values in oxygen in pore waters in uh, deep sea cores. And he shows there's no chemical reaction there's no uh, radioactive decay. We have advection and diffusion describes this profile. And he can use this to actually calculate 
the isotope value of bottom seawater uh, 20,000 years ago. This is really cool stuff. Okay, but again, same chemical reaction. We just have to know which parts are operative. <coughs> okay, I'm just gonna. Uh, <coughs> one other important thing is when we have isotope mixing. Okay, linear mixing and general isotope mixing. Okay, <coughs> so if we're mixing two bodies of water together, what's the concentration of water in water? One, okay? So when we're mixing water with water, we're mixing something that has 100% water with 100% water. And then we have what we call linear mixing, okay? Now we could have another case where we're mixing carbon-13 in dissolved carbon in water with carbon, with, with bicarbonate as bicarbonate with bicarbonate of a different concentration. So now we have different, we have concentrations and isotope ratios mixing. <coughs> okay, so again, <coughs> linear mixing. So here's just the, the difference in delta values. <coughs> and we have concentration ratios changing. And so a one to one mixture, like water mixing with water, is on this line. But we could have cases where we've got a huge difference in the ratio of one to the other. So 100 to 1, okay, just means that one is gonna, gonna change rapidly and the other, well one is gonna, in this case, um, this is gonna change slowly and then very rapidly and more moderately and the opposite depending on these isotope ratios. So in certain cases like bicarbonate in water, uh, and we're looking at carbon, we need to keep track of those kind of things. So these are just general isotope mixing models that it's useful to keep track of. So we kind of have this common language, I hope, through today. And, um, and uh, it, a bunch of these will become more straightforward as we go, go through the class. Some of you are familiar with a bunch of these. I saw some of you nodding your heads like, yeah, I get it. Some of you saying, not in your heads like, what the heck is he talking about? And others pounding your head saying, no, no. <laughs> what is he doing to me? Okay. <clears throat>